Hey students and welcome to our video on Wipro national level talent hunt, the syllabus, the schedule and what sort of coding questions can be asked and how do we answer them. So we'll be going through a series of questions by Quantmasters purely on technical as well as aptitude as well but these video series will be focusing on technical um, that is the coding questions, what kind will be asked and how to prepare for them. So let's begin working through this without a delay. So there are few criteria to apply for Wipro national level talent Twenty, the elite exam as they call it. You need to have 60% or above in 10th and 12th and these are the criteria that you need to have 65% minimum of marks and so on. And the whole idea is that they will be providing you 3.5 lakhs per annum initially and if you complete one year of work over there, you'll be getting an extra bonus of 75,000 as well. So the work they're giving you is project engineer. So that pretty much tells you why they need you to be pretty good at programming as well. So when it comes down to technical, the pattern is that you have two coding questions within a time limit of 60 minutes to answer. And these two coding questions can be answered in C, C++, Java, Python, any of these programming languages purely up to your choice. Now since there are a lot of non-IT students who may not know C++, Java and Python a lot, we'll be trying to cover as many programs as possible only in C so that everyone gets a good idea on how to solve them. So can we still apply? Yes, the last date to apply is 5th of January 2021 and the exams are scheduled between 19th to 23rd of January. So you can still go to the website listed over here. There is careers.wipro.com slash elite and register for the same. And if you want a lot of tutorials for the same, you can check our previous videos in this YouTube channel. And you can also like and subscribe so that you can get notifications of future videos that we keep posting purely on Wipro NLTH. So when we talk about programs what kind of programs can we expect is it easy is it difficult so the idea is that there are two questions to be answered within 60 minutes so that means each question you will be given half an hour at maximum to answer so if you're getting 30 minutes per question that is a fairly easy to medium level question it's not going to be a very hard question uh, on an easy level you may get something with patterns or pyramids, pyramid patterns or something like a series of numbers and so on. On a medium level, you can expect something based on stacks or queues or something based on sorting or string manipulation or so on. But you won't expect a very hard level program which will be based on much more complicated topics. So um, the kind of questions you can possibly expect as discussed are pattern programs and you can expect uh, given a series uh, to find nth term of the series or to find sum of n terms or any such program as well. And you can also expect a lot of string based programs based on vowels or consonants, palindromes, anagrams, lapindromes and so on. And apart from these there can be a few numerical programs based on Armstrong numbers, prime numbers, Fibonacci series and so on. So, so these are a few sort of questions that you can expect. So knowing this, knowing that these are the kind of programs you can expect, um, you can go through as many programs as possible on these types because these are the most common programs that have been asked over the past few years within Wipro's elite national level talent hunt on a yearly basis. So let us go through one of such program in our case in this session and try to answer it. And to everyone who's new to these kind of programs, um, we have solved a lot of such programs earlier for different companies as well, which are somewhat similar to this. So you can definitely go through our channel and um, access those videos as well. So let us look at these questions. So one of these questions goes like this. Ishan has been given a task by his teacher. He needs to find nth term of a series. So basically we are getting to know that it's a series of which we have to find nth term. So his teacher gives him some examples to help him out. So we have seen one example below this. So 
the idea is help ishan find the nth term of the series listed below so there's only one input that will be given that is n and for that one input we need to write only one output that is the nth term of the series now the questions that you can expect here you have to make sure that you don't print anything else on the screen apart from the one number they are expecting as output if they are expecting only n as the output make sure you don't print anything apart from n so that is the basic idea so let us go ahead with this we look at the series here the series goes something like 2 5 11 17 23 and so on so at first look it doesn't make much sense so let us try to figure out what that series is but before that just know that as an example they will also give an input and an output sample input sample output if the sample input is 3 we are supposed to print the third number of the series that is supposed to be 11 so let us now go ahead and try to figure out what is this series and how do we find nth number of the series so the series goes something like this so let's try to figure out what exactly is this series now at first look it doesn't make much of a sense because it's not any directly regular series that we see but when we try to figure out we can see that it is alternating prime numbers in this series so we have number 2 which is the first prime number then 3 is missed out then the second number of the series is 5 then 7 is missed out the third number of the series is 11 then 13 is missed out and fourth number of the series is 17 and so on and then 19 is missed out and the fifth number of the series is 23 so these are alternative prime numbers so we need to figure out nth number of this series so it's not so difficult once we realize this all we need to do is find nth number of this series in other words if user gives input as 1 we print first prime number if user gives number as 2 we print i'll just point it out as first prime number if user gives number as 2 we print third prime number if user gives number as 3 we print fifth prime number if user gives number as 4 let's say seventh prime number and if user gives number as 5 we just print ninth prime number so when you try to figure out the relationship between the nth term and which prime number are you supposed to print once you take a look at these examples you'll get to see if user gives a number input n all you need to do is just take n plus 1 and try to figure out the rest so um, the whole idea here is if you guys observe for the first one we are printing first prime number for the second one we are printing third for the third one we are printing fifth and so on so if you try to figure out the formula for this it is 2n minus 1 in other words so for n as 1 we are getting 2 into 1 that is 2 minus 1 that is first prime number when n is 2 we are getting 2 into 2 that is 4 minus 1 that is third prime number similarly when n is 3 we are getting 2 into 3 that is 6 sorry 2 into 3 that is 6 minus 1 5 so we are able to print fifth prime number so all that we need to do here is just write code to find nth prime number and once we have found nth prime number we just need to in other words once we found the input as n we just need to take a new number 2n minus 1 and give this as the input to find the prime number so let us try to figure out and in order to find nth prime number first we need to create a program or a code to find whether a number is prime or not so let us quickly start doing this i'll just go for a simple c program so we've got our header file and main function so apart from main function i'm going to have two separate functions here uh, since we like to keep our programs as modular as possible so that we can easily identify which function does what and easily modify them in the future as well i'll just take one function to create to find out whether a number is prime or not we'll just call it as int prime which takes an input n and it finds out whether n is prime or not similarly 
we'll also create one more function to find nth prime which takes an input number n and it finds out nth prime number so let us just state that this is a function which takes input as n and returns 1 if n is prime 0 if n is composite or in other words non prime so followed by this similar to this nth prime number is a simple function that takes again input as n and returns nth prime number so this is basically what we're supposed to do so let us try to create this prime function first because we are supposed to find nth prime number and user is supposed to give a number n if user gives a number n we are supposed to find 2n minus 1th prime number that is our whole idea so let's create a logic to find nth prime number and in place of n we'll just give it as 2n minus 1 that's the idea so let's go for the prime number function first if a given number is n we know that for any number to be prime let's say 1001 it must not be divisible by any number from 2 to 1000 now in one of our previous videos we have uh, done the logic to find prime number in the most efficient way possible you guys can go through the same if you want to know more in detail in depth about it i'll be going through this slightly faster i hope you guys are able to easily catch up with this um, so for any number to be prime it should not be divisible by any other number from 2 until that number minus 1 so in other words 2 to n minus 1 if a number is 1001 i need to start dividing from 2 3 4 5 up to 1000 but then you realize that if a number is 1001 at maximum it is only divisible by half of it take for instance a number 1000 the maximum number which is not 1000 that divides 1000 is 500 1000 is not divisible by any other number greater than 500 because 501 when multiplied by the minimum number 2 will give you a value more than 1000 so instead of dividing a number like 1001 from 2 till 1000 we'll divide it from 2 till 500 which is 1001 by 2 since it's an odd number when you divide by 2 you're gonna get 500.5 we'll neglect the 0.5 we'll make it as 1000 itself sorry 500 itself so this is the basic idea and further if you want to make it more easier take a number 36 for instance if you try to find factors of it it is divisible by 2 by 18 then 3 times 12 then 4 times 9 then 6 times 6 followed by again 9 times 4 and 12 times 3 and 18 times 2 so you can basically see see that after the square root of the number whatever were there in terms of factors they are repeated 4 times 9 is repeated as 9 times 4 12 times 3 <coughs> is repeated as oh sorry 3 times 12 is repeated as 12 times 3 2 times 18 is repeated as 18 times 2 and so on so in this sense you can basically take all the numbers up to the square root and only divide them so this gives us a better idea so instead of dividing if a number is 36 instead of dividing it from all the numbers to up to 36 by 2 which is 18 will only divide it from 2 up to root of 36 which is 6 so now comes the question what if the number is 39 we don't have a perfect square root but 39 isn't a perfect square so how will we find this out so when you divide 39 uh, or when you try to find a root of it it comes up as 6 point something we round it off as 6 itself because after 6 the next number is 7 and we only take up 7 when we get its perfect square 49 so we'll end up dividing it only from 2 to 6 which is the easier method and if you follow this method you will be able to find whether it's a prime number or not in a faster and easier method than before and this saves time the quicker your program is executed the better your chances are of getting selected it's not just about quickness your program must follow all test cases 
and must be accurate as well. So let us use this idea in our program here. So we'll just take an integer i and uh, since we need to find square root, I will use math.h as well. So we'll just take something like, um, let's say, <coughs> int m equals square root of n. Now, why am I taking int m equals square root of n? I'll explain ahead. Let's start dividing as i equals to i less than equal to m i plus plus. So i ranges from 2 to m. All that we do here is if n is divisible by i, that is n mod i is equal to 0, that means some number between 2 to its 2 till its root can divide n. So it's not a prime. If it's not a prime, we return 0. And if none of these numbers are dividing n, and we successfully exit this for loop, then we get to find out that none of those numbers divide n, so it must be a prime number. That is why we return 1 after the for loop. So why am I taking this over here? Why am, not, why am I not taking square root of n right here? If you take square root of n right here, for every time it goes to condition, it will calculate square root of n again and again and again. For a larger number, that takes up more and more time. So, so much time can be replaced by just taking two or four bytes of extra memory. That is why we are taking this variable over here. So, this is the basic prime function. Now, let's go for the next function to find nth prime number. If you want to find nth prime number, the basic idea is, again, given a number n, if you want to find nth prime number, you basically need an infinite loop because you don't know what is n how long you need to go to find nth prime number. Initially, it takes something like count equals zero because you haven't found any prime numbers. And we know we begin to find prime numbers with two. So we'll take int i equals two and count equals zero. So the idea is for every prime number we find by increasing i, we'll increase the count. And when count reaches n, we stop. So let us begin here. Instead of taking i equals 2, you can also initialize it in the for loop. That's completely to our discretion. And the condition is count not equal to n. So count is 0. If n is 5, until we find 5 prime numbers, we keep on repeating this. We just keep on increasing i one at a time. So all that we do within this for loop is pretty simple. If prime of i. Remember guys, we have already created a function called prime which takes an input integer n, it returns 1 if it's a prime number, it returns 0 if it's not a prime number. So here, if prime of i, if it returns 1, we know 1 means true. If it returns 1, it goes within the if condition where we increase count. So that means we have found the first prime number. After finding first prime number, we have to go back here and check the condition and exit. But the problem here is if you observe let's say let's say for instance you want to find third prime number in that case n is 3 so we'll start with i equals 2 count is 0 0 is not equal to 3 of course and we go to the for loop we check if prime of i 2 is prime so we increase count to 1 so let's say count is 1 then we go and increase i so i now becomes 3 instead of 2 so, since count is 1, we check if 1 is not equal to n. 1 is not yet equal to n. So, we go within the for loop again. We check if prime of i. i is now 3. It is prime. So, increase count again. Count becomes 2. We'll increase, go back and increase i now. i now becomes 4. And after that increment, we'll go back to condition. Check if count not equal to n. Of course, count is not equal to n. So, go back in again. Check whether the next number, 4 is prime. It's not. So count plus plus will not happen. Let's go back here, increase i value again. Now we'll check if count not equal, uh, equal to n. When we increase i again, it becomes 5. Count is 2, still not equal to 3. So now we go within for loop. If prime of i, i value is 5, it is prime. So count does increase to 3. After count increases to 3, when you check the condition here, since it is true, since it goes back, i increases now to 6. And when i increases to 6, you check now, count not equal to n, but count is equal to n. 
since count is equal to n you are supposed to stop here and say that i is the prime nth prime number but before saying i is the nth prime number i has already increased by 1 so i has increased to 6 but 5 was the third prime number so in that case we should return i minus 1 and not i the same thing can be changed by using a while loop to avoid this problem as well that can also be done but since we have started with this for loop let us continue ahead with it so if it is prime we increase count else we don't do anything there's nothing to be done so here um, since there's only one statement within for loop we don't even need brackets so this will help us find nth prime number and when count is equal to n it exits this for loop that is where we will return i minus 1 so if you are looking for first prime number since it will become 3 by then we'll return to and so on so this will return nth prime number for us so we have found both of these let us see if it works first i'll just take an integer n we'll just do a scan of percentage um, d comma ampersand n and one thing um, make sure that you do not write anything such as print f enter the number or something like that because they expect only the output and not a single word apart from it so let us not print anything else so after scanning the number we'll just print or um, let's just call this nth prime function of n it will return the number so let us print the number directly instead of storing it in one more variable as Uh, result and printing that you can directly print this function so let us print the same print f percentage d comma nth prime of n so let's see whether this works first let's compile and let's see if we have any errors we have one error that is whenever we compile with linux i need to use hyphen lm to link math once this is done let's execute this so if i give 5 i'm getting fifth prime number which is 11 so now since it works let's also check for first prime number let's also check for second prime number and third yes it works perfectly now since it works perfectly all we need to do here is instead of printing nth prime number we just need to do 2 into n minus 1 so that will give us the nth number of the series so when we give a value like let's say 4 here that is giving us 17 which was supposed to be eighth prime number if i'm not wrong so these are the simple kinds of programs that you can expect so first term of the series is 2 second term of the series is not 3 but 5 third term of the series is not 7 but 11 fourth term isn't 13 but 17 fifth term isn't 19 but 23 and so on so these are the simple kind of questions that you guys can expect and they are pretty simple and easy to solve as well so with this simple program you guys can see that it is pretty easy to find nth number in such a series so you can expect a lot of different programs which are similar in this series or could be pattern programs could be a lot of different logics as well we'll be going through many of those programs in the further sessions in the further videos that we'll upload as well for your benefit so stick around make sure you like and subscribe to check out the further video contents and if you guys are interested in going through an in depth live session uh, which we conduct over 100 hours of sessions with quantitative um, aptitude verbal technical with hundreds of hours of live sessions so that you are completely prepared to the best extent for interviews do join us to our programs by um, checking the details below in the description of this video thank you guys let's catch up in the next video